Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Happy New Year to you if you didn't see my video yesterday in West Lindsay. Today it's Tuesday and I have a video for you here, the first of 84 parishes in a brand new district for you to replace Chesterfield, which finished the Tuesday just before Christmas. Welcome to Newark and Sherwood, welcome to the parish of Walesby. Walesby is a village and civil parish in Nottinghamshire and the first look at Newark and Sherwood here on the channel. At the time of the 2001 census it had a population of 1,255 people. It increased slightly to 1,266 by the 2011 census. It's located 16 miles north of Newark. The village is famous for its forest, part of which forms a 250-acre scout campsite. Walesby's etymology is interesting. It can be attributed to the personal name Valor, spelt V-A-L-R, which means hawk. Over time, Walesby has taken many different forms in terms of spelling too, often spelt with an I at the end instead of a Y, and sometimes it's been spelt Valesby and Walesby with an H, like the sea creature. It shouldn't be confused with Walesby in Lincolnshire, although it often is. Its Lincolnshire counterpart is situated to the northeast of Market Raisin and is a parish we'll cover soon in the West Lindsay series. For reasons I'll explain later, Walesby Forest and its accompanying visitor centre will not feature in this video. Don't worry though, they will be seen in a future episode. The former noble proprietor here was the Duke of Newcastle, who was then the Earl of Clare. He sold both land and the manor house in the mid-1700s, and these are now better known as Lound Hall and Lound Hall Estate, within and to the east of the boundaries of nearby Bothamsall. White's Directory of Nottinghamshire in 1853 lists Walesby parishes including two distinct hamlets, these being Walesby and Willoughby, extending northwards from Curtin to Bevercoats. Willoughby seems to have now been absorbed into Walesby, indeed the only evidence that this YouTuber could find relating to the name is the street Willoughby Way which is off Green Lane. Also back then the parish contained 362 inhabitants and had access to 1,429 acres of land, all of which was a fertile sand except the eastern side around Willoughby which was a strong clay. Walesby was also described as a scattered village, but these days it certainly isn't, and it's the kind of settlement you can easily walk around in a circular fashion. The village used to hold a sheep clipping annual festival and feast on the Wednesday nearest to the 25th of June. Sheep clipping is also known to most as sheep shearing, and it's the process by which woolen fleece of a sheep is cut off. In some countries it's also considered a sport with competitions held around the world, often held between spring and summer. As far as a war memorial goes, there's a white stone tablet with black lettering inside St Edmund's Church, but as far as I could tell, the village doesn't have a freestanding memorial anywhere. The tablet covers World War I, but two names from World War II have since been inserted onto the bottom. Walesby does have a school, which we'll see later in the amenities section, although originally a school was endowed here in 1760 by Reverend Richard Jackson, and a national school was built here before 1869. On average, a house in Walesby will cost you these days around the £222,000 mark. Demographically, Walesby now has a population that's well over a thousand, and this is spread over an area covering 5.9 square kilometres. This gives it a population density of 198.8. Ethnically, 99.1% of its citizens are white British, and religiously well over 80% identify as Christian, which is a high proportion. Normally that figure has been close to 70% in most other areas of Nottinghamshire we've seen so far. 
Something else there's a high proportion of is retired people. Over 35% of Walesby's population fall within the over 65 age bracket. So a short time ago in uh, Wakefield, you may remember the Sitlington episode and in the village of Netherton, we saw signs that looked a little bit like this. These are a rare find these days. You don't find signs that look like that anymore. They're the standard sort of uh, British uh, font, if you like, uh, for road signs. Uh, so yeah, it's cool to find this in uh, somewhere other than in where we were in Wakefield. The village is located along the B6387, a road we're used to seeing from Bassett Law, as it's the same one that Horton and Bothamsall are located close to. Leading as it does to the A1, it provides the area with a direct link to the major road networks, as well as providing one for the nearby town of Ollerton. In terms of amenities, Walesby does quite well. There's a regular bus service, in fact there are four. These are the 15, 15A, 136 and 335. Walesby C of E Primary School is at the heart of the community. A happy, popular Church of England school, this has enthusiastic children, dedicated staff and an active governing body. Walesby School Nursery is also on site with places for two to four year olds rated good by Ofsted in 2019. There's also a recycling point outside the school gates. Here's the village hall. The building is very well used and benefits from a large bright hall and meeting room. It's a large building with the potential to run a variety of events. The parish church of St Edmund is perpendicular in style. At the time of the Reformation, Rufford Abbey held lands in Wellesby, though they had no interest in the church itself. Now I've got to say, I do like this church. The front of it here reminds me a little bit of a castle with those uh, battlement type uh, things at the top. It doesn't look like your regular chancel, does it? Well, there you go. I don't know whether this is picking this up, but the, I can hear the organ here. So I wonder if there's anybody in there. There's only one way to find out. Let's see if this door's open. Yes, it is. Right, let's go in. Remember the Horton episode of Bassett Law? Well, if I had continued down from the small car park and taken the field footpath as opposed to the railway line, I would have seen St James's Chapel, which is looked after by local people from Walesby and also the Church's Conservation Trust. It's linked to St Edmunds and the vicar here used to conduct an annual service there. At 15 Chapel Lane is another religious building, although this one is no longer used as such. It's the former Methodist Chapel dating from around 1895. Off Tuxford Road is Walesby Park, a large grassy and partially wooded area which is an oasis of peacefulness away from the main village. Now as a man who comes from an agricultural background I know what this implement is on display at the park's entrance. I wonder how many of my viewers do. The park is managed by Walesby Parish Council and as you can see it's known as Pocket Park. Ah, now then, <laughs> I found something here and uh, this is not the first time I've seen one of these red squirrels. Now, the first time I saw one of these is actually in a video that's not come out yet because this one will come out before it. Um, let's see if you can uh, remember, remember this one when that video eventually comes out. I'll give you a clue. It's in Nottinghamshire because it's in Bassett Law and it's coming your way in a couple of weeks time. 
That red squirrel would appear to be a Nottinghamshire thing. You'll be seeing another one soon in the Bassett Lore episode that I've just been talking about. Now for pubs. The Red Lion is a typical village pub well off the main road, sporting a spacious car park, and it also has three rooms, one of which contains a pool table. On the main road through and with the road signs on its wall, which we saw earlier, is the Carpenter's Arms. British made bows in the heart of Robin Hood country. That's how KG Archery advertise themselves. They make arrows too. With the proximity of Walesby Forest, it's perhaps no surprise that this is located close by. Along the B6387 is the Furs Luxury Boarding Cattery, so your feline friends are well looked after in this part of Nottinghamshire as well. And a bit further away along the same road is Smith's Garage. It's rare to find a garage like this these days in a village so small, or at least that's what I've found. The Walesby Forest Scout Camp is just outside the village. It hosts international scouting festivals amongst other events. And if you're wondering why we're not going to it, here I am to explain why. Okay, so I'm pretty much all the way around the village now. I'm just walking uh, along the main road that skirts to the western edge of Walesby because there's a little industrial estate up here. And there's also uh, what seems to be on the map, a sports ground. So didn't think it would be uh, very good of me to leave those out. It's not far to walk it. So we'll have a look at those via uh, walking on this uh, main road back towards Horton and Botham Sol. Now, something that I'm not going to include in this video is Walesby Forest. And you might think that's a little bit daft considering it's part of Walesby. However, there is a reason for this. And that's because the neighboring parish to the west has something very interesting in it, which is right on the border. And it makes more sense to go out there once than go out there twice. So for that reason, Walesby Forest will be saved until we cover the parish to the west, which is Pearlthorpe come Budby. This is Forest Lane, and this is where you'll come across Walesby Sports and Social Club and a massive football pitch. This is a sports and social club for all ages and is arguably one of the village's biggest amenities. Here, there are both junior and senior football clubs and a cricket club, plus an exciting social scene with a room available for hire. This tree-lined road forms part of a public bridleway, which if followed is a route you can take into Walesby Forest. It runs over the old Bevercoats Colliery Railway Line too, along the way. Okay, that's as far as I can go up here. I'm being, I'm being attacked by a dog. <laughs> I'm being attacked by a dog. <laughs> Cheers, pal. <laughs> I don't mind little terriers like that, they're okay. Yeah, this is as far up as I can go here because even though this is a bridleway, a little bit further down there towards a farm, uh, this is really what I was coming up here for. It's a little industrial estate called Oakham Farm Business Park and it's the headquarters of Ambicore. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about them now. Forest Lane is the headquarters of Ambicore, who provide compassionate, reliable, patient transport services throughout the UK. They are Care Quality Commission registered. They're a trusted, secure ambulance service and are able to deal with people with mental health illnesses, challenging behaviour, complex needs and other areas of care requiring a secure approach. They also have the advantage of operating 24 hours a day. Each and every transfer is watched over by a control room which constantly monitors and receives updates with its progress. Right, as a not so wise man once said, time for a picture bit. Here it comes right now.
and that's it people we are back to the beginning and Walesby unsuitable for heavy goods vehicles by the way is done that's the first one in Newark and Sherwood one down and 83 to go in this massive district the biggest one in fact in terms of parish numbers in Nottinghamshire brilliant time to move on to my second one now I don't know how much daylight I've got left but uh, probably not a lot hopefully I can get this one done before it turns dark off I go then this has been the parish of Walesby and I've been Andy otherwise known as the village idiot and I'm out mm -hmm.